we're going to change this setup right now to try something pretty new and original and connecting Le Région School with Le Rosé, which is in Roll, not so far away. So uh, we're going to be switching the screen now to have a live output from the classroom. So everyone, welcome. I would like to thank Salah and all his team. You know that uh, today is a quite a technical challenge um, because the idea initially was only to take one student from Le Rosé, one student from Le Région. And we finally decided to take it to, an, to the next level, which means having 20 students from one side and 20 students from the other side uh, to test what is a virtual classroom between two schools. Um, the idea, the idea behind this uh, small experience, because at the end it will be a 30 minutes experience only, is to show to the, to the new generation what could be the education or some of the means of the education in the future, which means that we could connect several schools around the world and have uh, common classes between uh, Europe, United States, Asia. So you could imagine the means. Um, and project the, in a virtual room. So in that case, they're on the moon now. But you could imagine in a few years what they could develop and what it would open for the world of education. So I really thank you. I really thank everyone, especially the technical team, the IT teams who worked very hard to make it happen quickly because we decided the numbers or uh, to increase the numbers quite uh, at the last minute, uh, basically. So only a few days ago. And uh, I hope that the students will really enjoy this first experience and remember it, because in the future, you will see uh, very impressive developments. So thank you, Salah, and this is for you to talk. Thank you, thank you, Karim, indeed. Um, since a few years already with Le Rosé and Le Région, we've been doing interesting explorations within virtual reality. Um, with Le Rosé, last year, we created two VR movies just in the two weekends. And now the kids are actually having a lesson right now. I was trying the VR for this VR for the first time, and it's really interesting. And I've never seen so many people on VR before as well. Um, I think this is a really amazing opportunity. I've never done anything like this before. And it's just amazing how the world is changing with all this technology. OK, we can start the class. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Everyone knows those words. Do we know how significant they were? We look around here on the moon, and we don't see anything. There's dust, there are rocks, and there's darkness. How come the moon was arguably the most significant quest of the second half of the 20th century. Whereas in the past, people, countries, would strive for dominance by fighting wars. In the Cold War, the route to dominance, the route to being the number one power, was in the quest to the moon. By arriving here, this tiny step from the Apollo landing craft onto this surface, this arguably began the winning of the Cold War for the United States. No need to fire any weapons. No need to kill people. But by getting here, probably changed the course of the Cold War. So why is that? The 20th century was, for most Americans, their century. The beginning of the century, the world was still dominated by the Europeans and their colonies. But the US emerged from World War I and World War II as the leading world power. The Europeans and their empires had declined. The new threat was the Soviet Union and communism, something which the Americans tried to stop with bullets and tanks and helicopters in Vietnam, but failed. 
to win a war against an ideology, you have to win the hearts and the minds. You have to persuade the world that your way of life, that your way of life is better than theirs. And the Americans thought they took that for granted. In 1957, when Sputnik, when Sputnik was orbiting the Earth, Americans looked up to the sky and they were scared. For arguably the first time, Americans felt insecure. They felt as if there was a power that had more power than them. The Soviet Union could do something that the Americans couldn't. And that meant that if the, Amer if the Soviets could put Sputnik into orbit, then what else could they do? What could they do to the USA itself? And so, from then on, the American government became determined to win the space race. There already was an arms race, but the way that the Americans could show their allies that they were the most powerful country in the world and that the American system, capitalism, democracy, freedom, that the American way of life was the best way, the way they could do that would be to show that they had the ability to fly to the moon and come back. And so there was a race between the USSR and the USA. The winners would show their allies and their enemies and neutral countries that their system could do something that the other system couldn't. And although people in the West had richer lifestyles than those in common, under communism, there was a fear that communism brought faster economic growth and greater technological advances. And going into space first was a way of showing that. The Russians were the first to go into space. They were the first to put a man into space, Yuri Gagarin, the Americans had to be the first to land on the moon. Now, in 1969, before any of us were born even, the Americans landed on the moon. But arguably, the Cold War ended peacefully because the Americans won that race. So, peace on that planet behind us and over the other side, the blue and green one, has arguably been achieved because of this landing. By us coming here, we win the Cold War and we ensure that the American way of life is the way of life that the rest of the world wants to emulate. And they did it without shooting people. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much.